Hey guys, welcome back to Trek on the Tube and welcome back to yet another Star Trek races. Star Trek Picard will be out soon and we will be seeing a lot of Romulans and Borg, or at least that's how I've been interpreting the trailers. So I put all of the requests aside for a while and decided to work on those two species specifically. The Romulans video has been out for a while now, I'll put the link to that in the description, you can check that out if you want. And now, today, I know it's been a long time coming, we can finally talk about the Borg. Keep in mind this channel was originally made for those who are new to Star Trek and feel overwhelmed by the amount of history and background every aspect of the franchise has to offer, so I try to keep these races videos as straightforward as possible. As simple as possible. There were always things that I gloss over on purpose. Also, I try to not spoil the bigger things, so there is at least a few elements of surprise left if someone wants to go back and watch all of the older Star Trek. Alright, it's time to tackle the subject at hand, Star Trek races, the Borg. Now these guys are arguably one of the most iconic villains of the entire franchise, and one of the most terrifying. But unlike the Klingons or the Romulans for example, the Borg were not introduced in the original series. They came along much later. They were first introduced in the Next Generation's second season in 1989. The crazy thing is, the Borg aren't even that present in the Next Generation, appearing in only six episodes. Of course, after that they got a lot more screen time in Voyager, and even made it to the big screen in First Contact, the movie that introduced us to the concept of the Borg Queen. But we're getting just a little ahead of ourselves, so let's let's wind it back. Who exactly are the Borg? What exactly are the Borg and where the hell did they come from? Well, the Borg are, simply put, cybernetic beings. Cyborgs, if you will. Part technological, part biological. So physically, they're already quite unsettling. To add to that, the Borg do not exist as individuals. They exist as a sort of hive mind, with every member of the species interconnected with each other in what they call the collective. Decisions, commands, instructions are all agreed upon, thought out, and executed by every Borg all at once. The Borg have one will. And this serves their primary function, their ultimate goal, which is to attain perfection, or more to the point, what they consider perfection to be. What makes this whole thing even more terrifying is that nothing can seem to come between the Borg and their goal. No species, no spatial anomaly, no temporal distortion. The Borg almost seem like an unstoppable force, pushing through everything the galaxy can throw at them with raw determination. As to where they came from, and when they came to be, or how, we don't know. Based on information collected by Voyager during their trip through the Delta Quadrant, we can safely say that that is where they are currently based, but nothing can confirm that that's where they originated. And although their existence is documented as far back as the 15th century human calendar, no one really knows how long they were around before that. It is mentioned that before becoming cybernetically enhanced, they were a more traditional biological species, but I mean, that's about all we know about their origin and, and, and history. Circling back to what they look like, and their primary goal, both are pretty much intertwined. You see, this obsession with perfection they have isn't just a state of mind, it physically affects their appearance. The Borg seem to be humanoid for the most part, but this doesn't necessarily mean all of them are. This is because the Borg use a technique called assimilation to enhance and improve themselves, as well as grow their numbers. Assimilation, as they put it, is adding the biological and technological distinctiveness of another species to their own. This other species culture will then adapt to service them. Now, yes, this does mean download information and steal technology, but what they also do is transform members of other species into Borg drones, sometimes by injecting them with nanoprobes, other times by grafting and connecting technological elements to them, most times with a bit of both. The person being assimilated then loses all sense of individuality and becomes one with the collective, and so the hive grows. Currently comprised of trillions of members, formerly from thousands of varying races, it's obvious why the Borg cast a shadow of fear over the entire galaxy. Many consider becoming a Borg drone worse even than death. An encounter with the Borg, however, doesn't necessarily mean assimilation. Often they just ignore the species altogether as long as they don't consider them a threat. And if they do consider them a threat, they will first scan and analyze their technological and cultural advancement before considering assimilation. Because, I mean, if, if the species in question isn't advanced enough, what's the point of assimilating them? The goal is to get better, after all. I mean, if the species doesn't match their requirements, then might as well just, uh, destroy them. It's all about efficiency. 
In regards to their design, unlike some other races in Star Trek, the Borg pretty much remained the same from their first appearance in The Next Generation until the last time we saw them on screen. Granted, the quality of the makeup and costumes got better over time, the detailing improved as new techniques and new technologies made their way into the industry, but in-universe, everything always remained quite coherent. And it would seem that Star Trek Picard will follow in those footsteps. Now, usually, I try to break down these Star Trek races videos into subsections of, of sorts. The technology, the culture, the impact on the galaxy and interactions with other races, the ships. With the Borg, however, it, it's not that easy because, as you've already noticed, all of these lines are kind of blurred. Everything they are and do is kind of one and the same, or at least serves the same purpose, so bear with me as we continue to talk about almost everything all at once. Starting with what we mentioned earlier, the Borg Queen, which is frankly something quite difficult to explain, an anomaly even. Now, we do know that the Borg sometimes choose single drones to act as mediators of sorts in order to facilitate communication between the Hive and other species. This can be for negotiation purposes, among other things, because yes, sometimes even the Borg are backed up against a wall and need to negotiate. But these designated drones don't fully become individuals during their mission. They remain a part of the collective and simply relay what the Hive is thinking in a more approachable way. The Borg Queen, however, is not quite that. She seems to be a leader of some kind. In her own words, she states, I am the beginning, the end, the one who is many, I am the Borg. Look, I don't know exactly how to interpret that. All I can tell you is that the Borg Queen is said to bring order to chaos. The crazy thing is, the Borg Queen is technically replaceable. I mean, we've seen multiple versions of her on screen, some of which died. And each time, the entity itself serves the same purpose and identifies as the same being. Technologically speaking, the Borg are very, very advanced, and I don't just mean the ships, the drones as well. First of all, every drone is equipped with an immense amount of very important components. Interlinked nodes, a myoneural cortical array, a neural transceiver, assimilation tubes, a personal force field, the list goes on. Most of this technology enables them to be directly linked with the hive mind at all times and go about their day-to-day -day business without, you know, any malfunctions, shutdowns, or external interruptions. Though, deaths can happen. When the Borg are attacked, drones can die. Not that this is an issue. Considering drones are usually disassembled and their components are recycled, nothing is lost. And the same goes for their ships. Built for functionality and efficiency over anything else, Borg ships are either geometric shapes, like spheres or cubes, or simply non sensical piles of metal placed upon each other that serve their own purpose but have no aesthetic motivation whatsoever. The Borg often do take the time to go back to their lost ships in order to salvage what they can, but every ship is also equipped with a self-destruct failsafe just to make sure no one else gets the hand on their advanced technology. Technology like the very strong titanium alloy used in their construction, or the components that permit the ships to quite astonishingly self-regenerate. Yes, the ships can actually regenerate themselves. Ah, regeneration. A word so associated with the Borg it would be near impossible to not talk about it. Borg drones do not sleep. Understand that they are enhanced beings. Most of what's biological in them functions because the technological components attached to them power them. And so the Borg, rather than sleep, regenerate. They place themselves in alcoves and simply fill up on power or energy, however you want to put it. Amazingly, Borg drones can survive in the vacuum of space. They can also withstand extreme temperatures even if the base setting of a Borg ship is 39.1 degrees Celsius with 92% humidity. And believe it or not, there are babies and children within the collective. Of course, they've all been assimilated and they're placed in maturation chambers in order to accelerate their growth. But still, it's kids, I guess. As I said before, these guys are all about efficiency. There's no time for, you know, fluff. So every drone has a numerical designation, no name, as does every species they encounter. Humans are species 5618, for example, Vulcans 3259. To add to this, the Borg live and thrive basically anywhere, on their ships, on plants that are assimilated, in superstructures they build in the middle of space just because they can. The biggest structure we know of is the Uni Complex, spanning over 600 kilometers. It's home to trillions of drones and the Queen herself. Now, although some structures are are just basically randomly placed, most of them are where they are for a reason, protecting a transwarp hub, for example. Transwarp hubs are big gateways into what they call transwarp conduits. These are things that the Borg have here and there across the entire galaxy, which enable them to travel great distances at extraordinary speeds. And as if that weren't enough, the Borg also know how to time travel. 
I mean, it's it's not clear whether or not they have the resources to do this often, but they, ha they have done it in the past. Or the future. Uh, I don't know. Point is, they have the knowledge. Okay, well, I mean, I could go on for hours. Truly, I could mention that their technology is so advanced they can just casually slice out parts of other ships they encounter. How rude. I could also mention that the Collective can adapt its drone's force fields to most kind of weapons after only a few encounters. How practical. We could even start talking about some of the bigger conflicts they've had, or how in some rare instances, singular drones have managed to sever their link with the Collective and regain their individuality. But I think that for today we've gone over more than enough. This is supposed to be an, an introduction to Star Trek and, you know, the Borg, after all. Anyway, I hope you've learned at least a little something, and I hope you now feel a little more prepared for Star Trek Picard. Thank you so much for watching this video, it means the world to me. You can uh, click the like button, share with your friends, don't forget to subscribe. You can also support this channel on Patreon if you enjoy the content. And uh, remember, live long and prosper. Resistance is futile.